Well, we are continuing our special town hall discussion legalizing marijuana, the highs and lows. I'm Zach Wheeler, and we are coming to you live this evening from the Clemens Center in downtown Elmira. If you are just joining us, we're glad you're with us, and we've gathered a panel of industry and community leaders to discuss the ramifications and implications of legalizing marijuana here in New York State. And just a reminder that we've been vaccinated for COVID-19, so uh, just want to make sure our viewers at home know that. Well, we have a third panel this evening, and I'd like to introduce them to you. We have Anthony Hooks, Community Prevention Specialist with Shemung Prevention, Casa Trinity. Elmira's Mayor, Dan Mendel, joining us. We also have Dr. Carolyn Buckler, an associate professor of practice in the horticultural section of the School of Integrative Plant Science at Cornell University. And from the Elmira Police Department, Deputy Chief Anthony Alvarez and Chemung County Assistant District Attorney Susan Ryder Ilaco, we thank you all for joining us this evening. We're discussing, obviously, the new law of marijuana, and we've heard a lot of. Uh, you know, negative aspects about the law. Um, is there any positive aspects to marijuana when it comes to medical? To the law? To the, well, to just to the drug marijuana? itself or to the plant itself. Well, the, the problem is that we don't know, right? Because we've had this, you know, THC has been a Schedule One drug. So, for instance, Cornell gets billions of dollars, federal dollars, for mm -hmm. research. And we're not allowed to touch it. So all the research we're doing right now, cannabis sativa is cannabis sativa. The only reason it's, it's called marijuana or hemp is, is it over 0.3% THC or is it under? It's very arbitrary. It's the same plant. But we can, we can study it and look at, at uh, the various genetics of it now, mm -hmm. now that, the, now that it's, uh, the states have, have uh, many of the states have legalized it. And on a state basis, we can do that research. The problem is we can't do medical research. There's only one institution in the United States right now that can do uh, human trials on THC, and that's uh, Ole Miss, the University of Mississippi. Everyone else is banned. Mm -hmm. It's illegal to have federal, federal funds for that. So we're, we're calling it hemp, and, and we're doing as much research as we can. But you know, I, I've been a scientist since 1980, early 80s. And I've never seen anything in the sciences where it's been right in front of us the entire time, and we know it's there. Humans have been using it for tens of thousands of years, but we're not allowed to touch it. Hmm. So there, there have been very few um, limited trials at all, um, and 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 even for the rest of the world. I mean, the most of the people that are most of the countries that have legalized marijuana have done so in the last four, five, six years. So and it takes years to get a research program going. So the problem is we don't know. We, we know that THC uh, uh, can, can cross the blood-brain barrier, so it can, it can affect the brain. And uh, that's a problem for, for younger folks, people 14 to 25, when the whole frontal lobe is, is re reactivating. It's, it's re, um, re, uh, 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 organizing itself. Mm -hmm. And the frontal lobe is all about you know, should I do this or should I not? It's 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 rash. It's the rational part of the brain. So we all have CB um, uh, uh, cannabinoid receptors in our brain. Mm -hmm. THC and CBD are both cannabinoids. So we really don't know what happens if those if those receptors get plugged up with THC versus what it's supposed to be doing or, or neurons and things. So so there's so much we need to to. To get at yet. Yeah, so to learn, it sounds like it's a very intense uh, study, and obviously this is early on in the stages with the state legalizing it. You mentioned uh, the youth impact, and I think, uh, you know, Anthony, you are constantly educating young people about drugs. Um, you know, what is your take on this this law, and how does that kind of re reorganize the way you bring your message to the young people? Uh, I mean, well, it's quite simple. Does legal equal safe? And the reality is, is that there's a lot of like gaps in education. You know, like the mystery of this drug and and just the experiences that we're having. I mean, it's causing a serious problem, especially in our youth with their underdeveloped mental states. You know, and and having that social norm of that it's okay, um, not just for you know, the you know the medicinal purposes, but now recreational. I mean, what message does that relay to the youth in the city, in the city, in the city of Elmira and in the surrounding cities? I mean, reality is, is that it's going to create more of an issue for them and confusion for them um, 
knowing what exactly is okay and, mm -hmm. and the fact that it's not safe for them to use. We want them to know. So education is, is key and we want to figure out the best way to do that. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. we're, tr we're kind of scrambling a little bit to get that all put together and see what that looks like just so we have a, an effective you know, reach to them. So Yeah, because this is very new and it's new, obviously new for municipalities and cities. Um, and the city has been dealing with, you know, you know, drug issues. Um, how does a law like this mayor um, affect the city and, and, and what kind of education can we bring to the citizens? Well, you know, the first thing that we're basically um, challenged with is the dispensaries because we're the ones that either got to opt in or opt out. And by the law, if we do not act on it and do a local law to opt out, uh, dispensaries can be set up. And if we allow that, I haven't talked to the entire council yet to see which way we want to go with this. Um, how do we regulate that? Where did dispensaries go? Um, how do we do that? Two, if we do opt out, it's my understanding from reading um, the law that the citizens, if they file a petition of 10% of the individuals within the city of Elmira that voted in the last gubernatorial election, so that's 10% of that voting pool, if they submit a uh, petition, and then it goes to referendum. And then the people make a decision whether to support our local law or not. So that's one challenge that we're going to have. Um, obviously, they've talked about the uh, issues regarding traffic accidents and so forth, and Deputy Chief Albanez will speak probably more on that, but my concern is too is pedestrians. You have a lot of pedestrians in the city, so individuals that are walking and you got an individual that's driving that's under the influence, mm -hmm. you know, that, that could create a big danger. Um, the other thing on the city issue is our employees and drug testing. Mm -hmm. you know, where does that go? I mean, it relates strictly to labor law in the law. So, you know, we have to take a look at that. Do we take marijuana off the, the uh, panel for testing employees? Um, so there's, there's a whole bunch of issues that it's created for us, um, mm -hmm. liability issues, and of course, again, with the dispensaries. So yeah. we've got a lot to work on. You did mention, uh, obviously, you know, we do have a large population here that walks, but they also ride their bikes, too. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, Deputy Chief Avernez, you've probably seen a, um, a large amount of you know, people that are impaired with marijuana. Um, how does that, how does the, the police department here in the city deal with a, a law like this? Well, <clears throat> I guess one concern would be to the mayor's point is that we, we, we've talked a lot about those that are driving motor vehicles, um, but I think the same type of onus is on those that are operating bicycles and or even pedestrians that if, if uh, you know, if they're a little bit buzzed or high on marijuana, no different than alcohol, that they should be taking some special precautions to make sure they're following all the, the proper pedestrian rules and laws and that's, that's already established through New York State uh, to help keep them safe. I mean, obviously I wouldn't want somebody to be riding a bicycle uh, high, nor, nor would I want anybody driving a car high. Um, as far as the enforcement efforts go with the driving of motor vehicles um, to the last panel, it does take a little bit more money to get somebody trained up into the uh, identification of being intoxicated via drugs instead of alcohol. Um, not that it can't be done, however, it is, a, it is an expensive process to get even one officer um, totally qualified and then um, requalified on, on a regular basis. We currently only have one DRE with the city of Elmira. We do have another one, however, uh, that officers deployed at this time. Um, so that would, you know, if we have somebody that we believe is high on marijuana mm -hmm. uh, to the point where they should not be driving, we would have to call that person in to, to perform the, the sobriety test. Okay. Um, this law doesn't change that. I mean, we still have people that already utilize marijuana before it was legal. So. Uh, that would be a cop out to say that we're, our hands are tied at this point because we should be enforcing that prior to the law being uh, changed. So it, it is something we'll have to mitigate, and we'll have to look at you know uh, funding dollars for for more training, and mm -hmm. you know maybe give our officers at least uh, a little bit more information on what to be looking for when mm -hmm. we're talking specifically with marijuana and not just all other types of drugs or alcohol. Yeah. I know the DA's office, we, we just heard from uh, District Attorney uh, Brooks Baker in the last, um, uh, the first panel, they, he was mentioning about not having um, those that had large amounts or quantities of, of the drug are the ones that were kind of getting, um, dealing with the penalties. Are you guys prosecuting in Chillon County, prosecuting, uh, what types of cases are you seeing when it comes to marijuana and will this law affect any of that? It usually is the larger amounts of marijuana that we've been prosecuting, so it doesn't really change our position on how we, uh, what we will prosecute. 
One thing I do notice, though, with the new marijuana law is what they've defined as um, the searchable areas of a vehicle when you smell the, air, the odor of burnt marijuana. Previously, if, you, if a police officer walked up to a vehicle and smelled the odor of marijuana or had the smell of burnt marijuana, they had the right to search the vehicle in every compartment they're in. Under the new law, it doesn't give you that option anymore. Uh, the only time that an officer is allowed to even search the area near the driver would be if they're investigating a driving while intox under the influence, I'm sorry, of marijuana. Mm. They can only search the area closest to the person uh, that was driving the vehicle and also any container that they feel that there might be some marijuana in. But that really has changed the law. So I'll tell you a lot of times on the, just the odor of marijuana with the police, we were, there was a lot of guns coming out of cars because of that. And it was a real safety. I think safety is now, it's not so safe here. Okay, that's an interesting uh, interesting perspective. I do want to kind of talk about, um, you know, we mentioned earlier before, and we've mentioned that, you know, obviously marijuana is not that your grandfather, the marijuana today is not your grandfather drug. We're seeing different um, species of it, hybrid versions of it as, as growers across the nation are are splitting those uh, species. What are, you know, when, when this becomes legal, we saw when CBD became a big issue. There's different people that were producing the CBD, but there's really no regulations on the type of CBD that people are getting. Um, is this something that we're going to now see with the marijuana products where you could have a really good company that produces a quality product, but then you could have some Joe Smo? Um, not producing a very quality product. What are we, what are we seeing when it comes to uh, regulations and those types of, of issues? So I think this is where New York State has really done it quite well. So the New York State Department of Health will actually be overlooking all of the products that come out in New Jersey, or excuse me, in New York. <laughs> so um, if you're going to make a tincture or, or a cigarette or whatever it is and sell it to the public, it has to go to an independent lab and find out, to, to, to find out what is really in that. Is, if you're saying it has THC in it, and it's at this percentage, then it needs to be that. Mm -hmm. And that, that also means that it doesn't have any CBD in it, or it doesn't have any other chemicals, or you know, pesticides, and you know, anything else in it. So the entire ingredients list will be there, and there'll be a little sort of a uh, URL you can take your phone and uh, 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 actually see the um, the the uh, institution that did that yeah. uh, survey and exactly what's in that. Um, so it's 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 a pretty it's a pretty good uh, thorough system. So, yeah, it sounds like that. And I know that this law also expanded the medical aspect where we you know people can grow it at home. Um, that kind of can be a challenge though for even uh, law enforcement if you're ending up seeing plants at the home. How does the how, I mean, it's too early, obviously, to tell, but how would one currently react to that type of situation? Um, of, have, of growing at home? Yeah. Uh, well, they need some background in plant science. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's tricky. Um, there, are pe there are pests and diseases and things, that, and again, because we haven't been allowed to touch it. It's only with the, the 2014 uh, 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 USDA um, initiatives that ha have allowed us to do anything. Yeah. And of course it took a couple of years to get going, but there it's, it is a very unique plant. It's a very old plant. It's been around for tens of thousands of years just with humans um, using it since, and it's been around before that too. So mm -hmm. we're going as fast as we can, honestly, to try and, and get the genetics and the pests and the diseases and, and the chain because the same plant you know, could could yeah. could test for no THC and some T C B D and then, you know, it goes into flower and all of a sudden now it has THC in it. And that's been really hard on farmers mm -hmm. because if you know it has to be tested two weeks before harvest. Mm -hmm. And if that guy told, sold you some some person sold you this is really just C B D. It's mm -hmm. just C B D. And something happens in the environment such that genetics changed, you know, or something mm -hmm. is initiated. It could be full of THC now, mm -hmm. and so you lose your entire crop, and that hurts. So it's yeah. it's it's a difficult plant. It is. It's complex too. It's difficult to grow as a, um, as I've been studying this uh, up on this issue uh, over the past few weeks. Uh, I want to just talk a little bit about the education aspect because I think that is so important. Uh, you know, when we have this brand new law to educate the public on it and you had mentioned Anthony a little bit about this obviously this is legal this is this is the law now 
um, you know, what, what is the kind of message that we, we want to send out? I think the most important you know, step that we need to take is kind of busting the myths. Mm -hmm. You know, people tend to just hear certain things and kind of put it into their whole life and how they do things and how they live and how they see it and view it. And it's, it's the misinformation that causes the, the, the safe, safety issue. You know, like it's, it's okay for you to do this or do it this much or only do it this amount so you don't get caught or only carry this amount so you don't get caught or how to do certain things and how to really go about it. So mm -hmm. um, the educational piece has to start, you know, with, with parents, with the community, and, and that hopefully will trickle down to the youth because I mean, the social norms of it being okay is, is what really <coughs> kind of takes the cake in, in everything that we're trying to do. We're trying to break down that barrier and say, it, it's a drug, like it's been said here before. It's a drug, it's, it, there, there's, safety, there's safety measures you need to take, mm -hmm. precautions you need to take, and unfortunately, if you don't know those precautions, you're just gonna go ahead and abuse it. And then, then we come with, you know, with people needing it, living on it daily, and uh, we can't have that because that creates safety issues for you know, law enforcement, for community members, for businesses, mm -hmm. uh, for owners, for you know, even just your neighbor, just it causes that issue, so. How do you work, work with a police department in a sense? Is there, is there some type of um, system where you kind of work together to help educate the young people, especially in their school districts? Our, our hopes are just to reconnect. I know we have a prevention team that works within the schools and um, you know we, we, we do our very best to stay in communication with uh, you know sheriff's departments. You know we participate in our, our uh, drug free community coalition has participated in the DEA Take Back Day for mm -hmm. prescription med meds, and you know we're, we're trying to stay as active in the community and connected with uh, you know the EPD and sheriff's department in hopes to uh, understand uh, how we can deliver a more effective message to our youth and to our schools and to our um, educators and things like that. Yeah, as I mentioned uh, in panel one, the, the two key words in this law are the regulation and the taxation. And I know, Dr. Uh, Buckler, you spoke about the regulation aspects, but what about the taxation? Will the city actually, if the city decides um, to opt in, would there be a, a, a nice economic boost for us? Or, or well, have you we know, we really don't know yet. It just depends on, you know, how many people are going to purchase it. Um, as I believe the county executive said in the last panel, 3% uh, of the revenue uh, the city would receive and 1% would go to the county, which, um, you know, are we going to do it for the revenue? So if we opt out, what happens if, you know, the town of Horseheads opts in? People will go to Horseheads and, and purchase it, and the same with the town of Southport. So uh, there would be a revenue flow for us if we do um, opt in. Like I said earlier, opting in means that we just don't do a local law opting out. So um, there would be a revenue flow. And it's interesting because, you know, a, a one of the big pushes is for to help people build their businesses and create an economic aspect to this. Um, but, you know, it's not as easy as, as you know, you think because, you know, we were just talking about the growing aspect of growing marijuana. Obviously, it's not a, as easy and, and there's a whole, you know, e exchange to that. What are some things that you think um, are really when you when you think about this law of legalizing marijuana that really just strikes a red flag and a big concern for you for me yeah. i'll tell you i was just talking to anthony about it the edibles we haven't talked about the edibles yet mm -hmm. um so what happens now if you got the edibles and people in the community bring those edibles home and their children get a hold of them mm -hmm. or if the children take them to school and start passing them along you know around as candy mm -hmm. um, that's a major problem that's a red flag mm -hmm. um, so th that's a major concern and the fact that people are going to be smoking on the street where they're not supposed to, you know, what can the police do to, to stop that? Um, you know, the way the laws are written, there's really no repercussions. Mm. So it's it's gonna it's gonna be a challenge for us. Yeah, we, we saw that we had a, a a middle panel discuss education, and I know that they had mentioned that they're following the federal SUNY system. Will obviously follow the federal system where you can't smoke on campuses. Um, but we thank you all for 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 taking the time and for being with us today to discuss this very important law uh, that is now part of the New York State law system. Of course, we're going to continue our discussion uh, in just a few minutes. We do have a poll, I believe, um, that we've been utilizing, so feel free to head online and check that out, but we'll be right back.